And I wanted to give a, another application, what I think is a cool application of uh, the bitwise logic stuff from the um, entry that was a couple videos ago. There's something called a linear feedback shift register. And it's a way of producing a pseudo random string stream of bits. And um, so this is just some number of bits. I haven't counted this. Uh, is it 16 or something? I don't know. It can be any number. Um, so you can see that there's there's uh, there's some kind of feedback happening here. And there's also output. The output is always just the 0th bit is getting output every time. and um, Whenever a step happens, the the thing that's happening to the uh, the binary number here is that it's getting shifted to the right by one. But when you shift to the right by one, you have to introduce some some new element here. You know, if you just do a right shift, then the the computer pads this with uh, zeros. Um, but you don't want it to eventually just start outputting nothing but zeros. And um, so it, something kind of cool and complex and dynamic happens if you if you XOR some of these entries, and um, the the technical name for these entries that you choose to XOR are called uh, is a tap. So these are these are the taps. So the zeroth bit, uh, the second bit, the third bit, and the fifth bit in this example are taps. And there's this whole science of choosing taps, which is interesting. It uses this uh, mathematical theory called Galois theory, which is something that sometimes math majors don't even talk about as undergrads. So it's fairly high-level stuff, and um, it has to do with uh, polynomials not factoring over finite fields. And you can read the article yourself. You know, Wikipedia. This is one of those cases where Wikipedia is not. Uh, maybe the easiest resource to understand. I kind of prefer the, um, what is it, Wolfram something. There's like a Wolfram article on it that's a little bit easier to understand for me. But anyway, I wrote some code to do this and obviously it's basically just XOR and shifting. since something a little bit complicated is happening but not too complicated. And this code that I'm using for the linear fed feedback shift register I just got right out of uh, the applied cryptography book. Um, so this is, this is, there's some initial value. You can make the initial value 1, but when you make the initial value 1, it's a little bit boring. Um, so I made I just hit a bunch of keys like a monkey and um, made this, this um, initial binary number. So I've, you can see that I've made some of the p bit positions here different colors. And I've, I've made the output bit green. Um, in this example, the output bit is also a tap. So it it's, should be red and green. But it, you know, I have to choose, so I make it green. Um, and what's happening is that every stage here, everything is getting shifted to the right by 1. You can see that that's true, right? What happens between here and here is just a right shift by 1. And um, this is the output bit here. This is goes out into the random stream, so you can kind of think of that column as being a random stream of ones and zeros. But something has to be tagged on to the end, and what gets tagged on to the end is the XOR of the taps. So in this first number you have one, 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 one. You can see it really just, uh, it, it's just the, uh, the, the parity, right? Um, so uh, these two go and then those two go in that case, but the XOR of 1, 1, 1, 1 is 0, so 0 gets added here. And then you XOR 1, 1, 1, and so that's an odd number of 1s, you get 1. Now you XOR 1, 1, 1, and that's 1 again, so you get two 1s here. And um, it's simple, right? It's very simple. That's one of the, the reasons that um, it's used as a in, in software because it's you know an easy thing to understand I guess and here's the code that that does it so it's initialized to be this number and this is a static variable which we've already talked about you know the initialization happens the first time you call this function subsequently it ignores the initialization and uses whatever the value happens to be and I've inserted this this line so this line is not in the applied crypto book it just it does this output and this is how you do the um, the colored 
the colored ASCII if that if you find that interesting. And of course, I just stole that from the internet, and you can store it there too. And um, here I've written a little macro for deciding whether or not a particular index is a tap index or not. So my my tap in indices are just these. Uh, we haven't talked about logical OR. We've only talked about OR as a binary operator. Um, logical OR is is two pipes instead of one pipe. The only difference between logical OR and or as a binary operator is that these things are evaluated from left to right and it doesn't do redundant work so if you're oring a bunch of values if it gets a value of true like if this is true it doesn't bother to evaluate the rest of these so it's just like a single pipe except it's slightly more efficient and of course that just literally gets plugged in here by the by the precompiler and there are three cases. Is it a tap and non-zero? Then it's red. If it's otherwise not a tap, you just print the thing. Those, those are the white ones. And um, it, uh, the, the only remaining case is that it's the zeroth bit, and we color those green. Um, as for what happens here, what, what, what's happening is that all these magic bits, the tap bits, they're getting aligned with the very first bit here. So this is just one. This is just the constant one. And this is where the XOR is happening. So this is pushing the bit that's in the 31st place over to the 0th place. And this is pushing the bit that's in the 6th place over to the 0th place, etc., etc. And you're going to XOR them all together. And then you're going to AND that with one. And the effect of the AND is that it just selects the lowest order bit, so the zeroth bit. Now you have to shift this by 31 to the left because you're going to OR it with what was already there shifted to the right by 1. So what these last two lines do is just tape it on to the left hand side. And then you return um, the output bit, which is just the lowest order bit. So this last line just uses this to pick out the lowest order bit. So pretty slick. I didn't write that code. There's the rest of it, if you care. I just took the um, the user input. The user can say how many times uh, to to do the process, and I picked 100 here. It it gets more, you know, for the dynamism to start happening. It takes a while, and um, so I wanted to make that kind of a big number. This is totally off topic, but it, I just want to pr point out that this assert uh, function is useful. So let's say that if, I, if I'm if i a lazy user or a sleepy user and I forget to type in the, um, the command line input, then abort crashes the program. Uh, sorry, assert crashes the program, and, and you get to see the reason why. It's because of the failure of, of this condition, and then you say, oh, duh. And um, to use that, you have to include assert.h. And uh, that's it.